This episode is sponsored by your time to travel.net. And welcome once again. This is Georgia Championship Wrestling, June 1970. Uh, Rodney, let's let's go ahead and start it right off on Friday, June 5th. All right, we go start back at the Sports Arena in Atlanta, Georgia. Big Bill Drama and Bob Armstrong defeat Kikochi and Fuji. Betty Colt defeats Professor Kamira. It's El Mongo versus the Professional. And that, of course, was a time limit draw. Paul DeMarco defeated the Challenger. The Georgia Television Championship is on the line. Nick Bockwinkle defeats Joe Scarpa. He's the Georgia Television Champion now. Lights out match. Nick Bockwinkle defeated Tim Geo Hagen by disqualification. <laughs> How do you have a disqualification in a lights out match? That I don't know. But anyway, in another lights out match, Leo Garibaldi defeated Betty Colt. I am gathering on the last, if you've watched our May, if you've not watched our May 1970 Georgia Championship Wrestling, go over there and see that, because you're going to have to understand why Tim Geo Hagen uh, had a lights out match with Nick Bockwinkle. He was the special guest referee in a match with uh, Joe Scarpa. <laughs> evidently, something happened during this match that set up for this lights out match, and uh, <laughs> evidently, Leo Garibaldi and Buddy Colt, that was a double lights out match. Uh, and back then, when they had lights out matches, they would turn the lights out for 10 seconds. And that would signify that the matches were not going to be sanctioned by the National Wrestling Alliance. That, not that's not done anymore, is it? No, no, no. Well, they, I mean, simply today, every match seems to be. Why, you can't tell the difference between a, a disc, when there's a, a no disqualification match, a street fight, or whatever. There's no, there's no difference in the way they're doing it at all. DeMarco won his match when he turned the challengers, which was Bobby Shane's mask around and taken advantage of its temporary lack of vision. So that's why the challenger did not need. He evidently didn't know how to make that mask tight enough. Somebody didn't have to turn it around. There's always masks, some kind of uh, what we call wardrobe malfunction. And this is the case here. Yes, the Bockwinkle Scarpa match was a rematch for May 29, 1970. During Bockwinkle's match against Geo Hagen, Scarpa, Scarpa, <laughs> Scarpa charged the ring and attacked Bockwinkle, bringing the match to an end. Uh, that's how the disqualification came along. We ask how that. How that there happened. we go. It was announced that the Gladiator would be wrestling in Atlanta on June 12, 1970. All right, we come up on June the 6th, 1970. That's the TV studios in Atlanta, WQXI, the Challenger versus Paul DeMarco. Then we move to the the Atlanta. On that whole card. Well, well, when you have this kind of talent, you can have a one fall with television time remaining. And that's what it's like a return match from. Or it could have been, it could have been an expiration, a time match. They had those a lot back then where you would have one fall. they're more like today's Iron Man match where you'd have expiration time match and the, the the person with the most falls would actually win the match in, in that time frame. They're great matches. If you haven't ever seen one, they're really great matches. And, and they keep the, uh, they, especially if you have two very talented people, the people that they, uh, and wrestlers that people know, they are highly engaged in the match. And after every fall, they would normally take a break, normally a commercial, then they would come back with this, with the next uh to continue the match. And like I said, the, the most falls in a certain match, and I'm not saying that this is what this is, but it would seem to uh, coincide with uh, just having one match on television. And don't forget, this would be a return match from what DeMarco did to the challenger by turning his mask around for television the very next night. Day. Good, again, good booking by Leo Garibaldi. Awesome. June on, and then we come June 12th, 1970. We're back at the Atlanta City Auditorium in Atlanta. Bob Armstrong versus Professor Kamira. And of course, that was a time limit draw on that one. Darlene Dagmar versus Diamond Lil, winner unknown in that one. Joe Scarpa and Alberto Torres defeated Yukochi and Fuji. It's the professional defeating the gladiator. Ray Garkle and Buddy Fuller defeated Buddy Cole and Carl Von Stroheim by disqualification. And in the main event, the NWA Georgia Heavyweight Championship, it's Nick Bockwinkle defeating El Mongo. It was reported that when Bockwinkle forced El Mongo to cement with a figure four leg lock, 
that it was the first time El Mongo had ever conceded a match. Good stuff. Very good stuff. Homer Odell was the manager for and this. And it party. proves to do two things. It proves it. Th this is this is twofold. First of all, it gets Bachwinkle's figure four over without a shadow of a doubt. But it also sets up that when Bachwinkle Bach puts it on another time, the people it's perfect, absolute perfect ring psychology in this. And uh, my my uh, I, I give uh, I give full credit on this one to Leo Garibaldi. Tremendous. Yes. It was announced that the Missouri Mauler, which was Larry Hamilton's uh, brother, and I, I cannot review or remember what his name was. Larry what? Hamilton, Larry Hamilton's brother? Jody yeah. Hamilton. Jody Hamilton. That was Larry Hamilton, then, wasn't it? I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and the challenger would be wrestling in Atlanta on June 19th, 1970, and the challenger would unmask in order to participate in a tournament to determine a challenger to wrestle the NWA World Heavyweight Champion on June 26, 1970. So the challenger to unmask live in person, good way to sell some tickets. And uh, the, the reason is because to challenge the NWA World Champion. Yeah. And that sets up for a storyline uh, uh, or a program, if you will, later on down the road. Yes, the program for this card reports that there were fans who persistently alleging that the Gladiator and the Missouri Mauler was actually the assassins under different masks. How so, dare they? So they're saying the Missouri Mauler coming to town was going to be under a mask, and the Gladiator was one of the, uh, and it could have been. Maybe it was. Uh, it could have been. You're right. Could have been. All right, now we come up on the uh, June 13th, 1970. We're back at the television studios, WQXI in Atlanta. It's the Challenger versus the Gladiator. Buddy Colt versus Professor Kamira. Doug Gilbert and El Mongo versus Nick Bockwinkle and Paul DeMarco. And Homer Odell managed the Colt. Uh, Homer Odell managed Colt during the Gilbert Mongo Bockwinkle DeMarco match. Mongo turned the tables on Bockwinkle and forced him to, to submit with his own version of the figure four leg lock. Tremendous. Absolutely tremendous stuff. Tremendous booking. You do the one thing and you answer it, answer it. to get Mongo over. And what did they did not do? What they have done on the wrestling programs over and over again? You cannot just beat your baby face and then turn right around and beat him again. <laughs> This in this instance, especially in that way, especially that way. Yes. On June 19th, 1970, Atlanta, Georgia, the auditorium, Nick Bockwinkle defeated Joe Scarpa. Doug Gilbert defeated Alberto Torres in a referee decision to advance. So the referee the, made the decision uh, who would uh, advance in that. Uh, Bobby Sheen defeated Paul DeMarco. Again, a referee decision to advance. The Missouri Mauler defeated El Mongo by disqualification. Nick Bockwinkle defeated the professional Doug Gilbert. Bobby Shane, who would unmask uh, live in Atlanta, Georgia, and he was no longer the challenger, defeated the Missouri Mauler by disqualification. Leo Garibaldi, Ray Gunkel, and Buddy Fuller defeated Homer Odell, Buddy Colt, and Carl Von Stroham. Nick Bockwinkle defeated Bobby Shane. And so he won the chance to go against Dory Funk Jr. for the World Heavyweight Championship. Yeah, Odell managed both uh, Colt and Von Stroham. As promised, the challenger would unmask uh, against uh, with his match match against DeMarco, revealing his identity to be, to be uh, Bobby Shane. The tournament was determined the challenger to wrestle the NWA World Heavyweight Champion on June the 26th, 1970. It was reported that the purse for the tournament was $3,000. Charlie Smith and Eddie Smith were credited as the referees. June 20th, 1970, Atlanta, Georgia, WQXI Studios, Alberto Torres went against Cisco Grimaldo. 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 Oh, you Gucci and Fuji versus Buddy Colt and Carl Von Stroham, El Mongo versus Nick Bockwinkle, and that was on June 20th, 1970. All right, we're back at the Atlanta City Auditorium on June the 26th, 1970. Alberto Torres defeated Chuck Wiley, Donna, Christian, Christiana 
That is a good one. Christian Nello uh, versus Rita Botcher. It is Joe Scarpa versus Louis Tillet or Tillet, whichever you prefer. It is Ray Gunkel, Betty Four, and Leo Garibaldo, Baldy defeating Betty Cole, Carl Von Strahan, and Homer Odell. Bobby Shane versus Paul DeMarco in the main event. It's the World Heavyweight Champion, Dory Funk Jr., defeating Nick Bockwinkle. Look at that. He defeated somebody. He wins every time. If you'll notice, we don't, uh, 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 we haven't got to the point where the champion does ever win. He's winning every time. And that looks like he comes to town. And that's the really, that's the really the way it should be. Yeah. It was announced that there would be a tournament for the Georgia Tag Team title on July 3rd, 1970. It is unclear as how the title became vacant. If we remember, Ray Gunkel and Buddy Fuller won the tag team titles. They won it on March 27th, 1970 in Atlanta. I wonder what happened. Hmm. All at once, they just not the champions anymore. I know they didn't like each other. But, uh, you know, you still would think they would have lost the titles at some point. Hmm. Don't know what happened unless it happened in another town that we don't know about. But we don't know. But anyway, uh, they're going to have a, a Georgia tag team title. Mask Assassin, still something going on with them. And uh, we'll, be, we'll be talking about That's, that. That is confusing because I had saw where the Assassins actually won it back. And they were all, and, and the, they had the Georgia Heavyweight Championship all at the same time. So, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm, with, the, I'm with whoever wrote this. They, it's confusing, no yeah. doubt. June the 27th, 1970, we're back at the studios in Atlanta on Saturdays. Uh, it's El Mongo versus Buddy Cole, Paul, De, Paul DeMarco versus Bobby Shane. And then it's Paul DeMarco again against El Mongo. And the referee, uh, he won, in, uh, well, there's by referee's decision. I'm not sure who won in that one. You know, here's another thing. That had to be a good television. because I, And the reason I say that, they must have had a little bit of a tournament going on. Mini, there. mini tournament for sure, yeah. Because you got El Mongo against Buddy Colt. Then you have Paul DeMarco against Bobby Shane. And then Paul DeMarco goes against El Mongo. So I'm gathering some little mini uh, deal went on uh, to, uh, for I guess somebody got a championship match. Uh, and we'll see when we look at July 1970 as we continue our look at Georgia Championship Wrestling. If you enjoyed this video, give us the big thumbs up. Subscribe to the video and go one step further. Hit that notification bell. We'll see you on the next video right here on Pro Wrestling Inside Now.